Hello, welcome to Main Street United Methodist Church in beautiful Waynesboro, Virginia. This is our worship service for May the 2nd. And uh, I have just a couple of announcements. Uh, one is I'm gonna be changing how I do my office hours. I have tried to have Zoom office hours. Uh, that has not worked out so very well. So I will uh, be hosting regular office hours in the church and you can call and make an appointment to come and see me at any of those times. Or if you need a visit in your home, you can call and make an appointment for me to come to your home. That's, uh, that's in the uh, near, near future. And so uh, heads up on that coming. Also, the, uh, the conference has lifted some more of our worship restrictions for the in-person worship. And, and we can now sing for five minutes in a uh, in-person worship and so uh, we're going to start out slowly and we'll be singing the doxology and the gloria patri and uh, and possibly one or two hymns uh, during the in-person worship services in the near future have to discuss it all with our healthy church team but uh, but i'm all excited about this possibility and so just wanted to to let everybody know let everybody know are there any other announcements? Something I might have... No? Very good. Well, let's prepare our hearts and minds to worship our Lord and Savior. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for an opportunity to gather here and to praise and worship you. Lord, I, I pray that you would pour out your Holy Spirit here and in the homes of everyone who is worshiping with us online. Sanctify their homes, Lord, as worship space for you. Lord, help us all to feel your presence no matter where we are. And help us to know that you are with us. Amen. Now let us sing our hymn of praise, number 92, For the Beauty of the Earth.
affirmation of faith is in the back of the hymnal, number 881. This is the Apostles' Creed, our traditional version. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Once again, I want to thank everyone for continuing to give your tithes and your offerings to the Lord. And I ask that uh, um, that the Lord, our Lord God, would bless all of these tithes and these offerings. Lord God, teach us how to be better stewards of your what you've given us. Because everything we have, Lord, has come from you. Teach us how to learn and grow and build your kingdom right here, right now. We love you, Lord. Amen.
Our gospel lesson is from the Gospel of John, chapter 15, uh, verses 1 through 17. These are the words of Jesus Christ. Will you pray with me? Oh, Lord, thank you for inspiring John to write down what you said. Lord, I pray that you would help us to understand this scripture a little better. Open our minds to understanding this scripture. And may the meditation of our hearts and the words of our lips always be acceptable to you. O oh Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Amen. I am the true vine, and my father is the vine grower. He removes every branch in me that bears no fruit. Every branch that bears fruit he prunes to make it bear more fruit. You have already been cleansed by the word that I have spoken to you. Abide in me as I abide in you. Just as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Those who abide in me and I in them bear much fruit. Because apart from me you can do nothing. Whoever does not abide in me is thrown away like a branch and withers. Such branches are gathered, thrown into the fire, and burned. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask for whatever you wish and it will be done for you. My Father is glorified by this, that you bear much fruit and become my disciples. As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love. Just as I have kept my Father's commandments abide in, and abide in his love. I have said these things to you so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. No one has greater love than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. I do not call you servants any longer because a servant does not know what the master is doing, but I have called you friends because I have made known to you everything that I have heard from my Father. You did not choose me, but I chose you, and I appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last, so that the Father will give you whatever you ask him in my name. I am giving you these commands so that you may love one another. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Several years ago, I believe it was back in uh, the late 1980s, Deborah and I uh, bought our first house and uh, in in behind the house it was not really a huge backyard but uh, but there was an apple tree and there was a grapevine and I had never had a grapevine and so I was all excited but this grapevine was way overgrown and so that first year I pruned that grapevine because I knew that even the Bible says you got to prune the grapevine to bear much fruit well, I pruned that grapevine. By golly, I cut it way back. And would you know that the next year we got no grapes? None. No grapes. And so, uh, so then I went and began to do a little research about what it takes to uh, prune a grapevine. Because uh, when I went at it, I just hacked it. And it turns out, that's not what you do when you prune a grapevine. And, uh, and I found out that there is a proper way to prune a grapevine and that at each node, there are three branches. 
There is the main branch that comes from the root. And then there is the branch that grew and bore fruit last year. And then there is a, a new branch that gr is going to grow this year and produce fruit next year. Well, not knowing that, I just cut all the branches that looked like they were overgrown. And so all the branches that would have produced fruit, I accidentally cut off because I didn't know what I was doing in pruning that vine. But so after learning the proper way of, uh, of pruning a grapevine, oh, and there's sometimes sucker branches that, that grow that you also have to prune off so that those that are going to produce fruit will produce good fruit and a lot of it. And so after pruning properly the next year, every year after that, we got, I mean, five-gallon buckets full of grapes every year. Deborah made fine grape jelly. Um, it was almost enough to last us a whole year every time, wasn't it? it was, uh, that was awesome. One day I hope to have a grapevine again. But uh, it's, it's good to know something about pruning and what to prune and what not to prune before you start hacking it, a, a grapevine with the, with the pruning shears. Well, in our verses this morning, Jesus said, I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine grower. And obviously, as the Father, God the Father is the vine grower, he knows how to do it properly. He removes every branch in me that bears no fruit. Every branch that bears fruit, he prunes to make it bear more fruit. So the pruning shears in the hands of God will cut away all the parasite branches that suck the life out of us. When God prunes us, he cuts away that which bears no fruit so that we can grow and produce much fruit. But I've got to say, it can sometimes hurt to have a branch pruned. Now, the dead wood and these parasite branches that do not produce good fruit are sin in the body of Christ. Jesus is the vine. We are the branches. Verse 3 reads, you've already been cleansed by the word that I have spoken to you. When, when we have Jesus Christ in our hearts and our minds, we confess our sins and repent, our loving Father, the vine grower, will prune away our, our branches of sin through the forgiveness of sin. And Jesus said, abide in me as I abide in you. Just as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, Neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Those who abide in me and I in them bear much fruit. And because apart from me, you can do nothing. So once sin has been pruned from our lives, we can receive God's free flowing blessings through Jesus Christ our true vine, and then we can bear much fruit if we are abiding in Jesus. Now, verse 6 reads, Whoever does not abide in me is thrown away like a branch and withers. Such branches are gathered and thrown into the fire and burned. A branch that is cut off from the vine soon withers and dies. I want you all to notice something. God doesn't cut us off from the vine. It is sin that cuts us off from the vine. It is sin that strangles us so that we become unable to receive God's blessing. I know you all have heard about Roundup, right? That herbicide. Have you ever used Roundup to, to, kill, uh, to kill plants? I must say, I am very, very allergic to poison ivy, okay? And so if I see poison ivy growing uh, near my home, I will get Roundup, and I will spray Roundup on the poison ivy. I don't like to use it because, you know, because I like plants, but I don't like poison ivy. You know? 
<laughs> I'm very allergic to that. So uh, uh, three shiny leaves, spray first, ask questions later as far as I'm concerned. When we spray this, this uh, Roundup on a plant's leaves, the chemical is absorbed through the leaves and it goes into the transporting tubes of the plant and then clogs them so that the life-giving nutrients and the water coming up from the roots can no longer reach the leaves. That's, that's how it kills the plant. It, uh, it clogs the transporting tubes of the plant. Well, sin is a whole lot like Roundup. It gets into our lives, it clogs our connection with the source of life-giving nutrients, that living water of Jesus Christ. Sin gets in our lives and chokes us off from the source. God has pruning shears to help us produce good fruit, but the devil has a bottle of Roundup, and he wants to cut us off from the vine and strangle us so that we cannot receive God's blessing. When we are living in sin, or we have allowed sin into our lives, it strangles our connection with God so that we cannot receive the blessings that God wants to bestow upon us. Verses 7 and 8 read, If you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask for whatever you wish and it will be done for you. My Father is glorified by this, that you bear much fruit and become my disciples. So when we abide in Jesus, we are open to God's blessing. And God wants to bless us, really does. And we choke off that blessing with sin. Abiding in Jesus means that Jesus' words abide in us. When we abide in Jesus, our desires are transformed to match God's desires so that, by, so that our prayers become a rebreathing of Jesus' words abiding in us. So I often pray, Lord God, change my will to match your will, because Lord, I want to want what you want. And somehow God is so, uh, so great and powerful that God can just understand that prayer, even though it can get very confusing. But I want God to change my will so that the things that I will and want are the things that God wills and wants. And so that's what I pray. Verses 9 through 11 read, As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. And I have said these things to you so that my joy may be in you and your joy may be complete. Abiding in Jesus means abiding in his love. It means keeping his commandments. By keeping Jesus' commandments, we abide in his love and our joy will be complete. And all the sin in this world stems from a lack of love and respect. I even have to say, love and respect are two sides of the same coin. Love and respect are the same thing looked at from two different angles. By abiding in Jesus' love, we can avoid a world of sin. Verses 12 and 13 read, This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. Wow. Did you hear that? Jesus gave us a new commandment. You know, there were the big ten, right? Jesus gave us a new one, number 11. And it is, love one another as I have loved you. No one has greater love than this to lay down one life for one's friends. 
And that is exactly what Jesus did for you and I. He calls us his friends, and he laid down his life for us so that we could be forgiven of our sins and be reconnected to the source of all good blessings. In verses 14 through 17, Jesus said, You are my friends if you do what I command you. I do not call you servants any longer because the servant does not know what the master is doing. But I have called you friends because I have made known to you everything that I heard from my father. You did not choose me, but I chose you and I appointed you to go and bear fruit. Fruit that will last so that the father will give you whatever you ask him in my name. I am giving you these commands so that you may love one another. And that's the key. Love one another. Jesus is the true vine. We are the branches. God is the vine grower with the pruning shears, ready to trim away all the guilt and the sin that it tends to accumulate in our lives so that we can fully receive God's free-flowing blessings and then bear good fruit that will last. The devil is the accuser with the bottle of Roundup. He tempts us to sin so that he can choke us off from the source of all blessings and kill us with that herbicide of sin. Well, Jesus Christ invites you to abide in him. Abide in the source of all that is good and right and true. Abide in the love of Jesus Christ and receive God's blessings thereby produce good fruit. Praise be to God. Our hymn of fellowship is number 397, I Need Thee Every Hour.
Thank you for loving us. Thank you for being with us every moment of our lives. Lord, help us to abide in you forever. Lord, you know that many of us and many, many of our family, our church family, and our, uh, our biological and extended families are in various different situations right now. We have loved ones who are sick or hurting, loved ones who are grieving. Lord, we have loved ones that are afraid right now. We have loved ones who are doubting and doubting that you're good. Lord, I pray that you would reach out and touch each and every one of your people. I pray that you would heal the sick, Lord. I pray that you would heal all those with cancer. I pray you would strengthen the weak. And if anyone is in pain, give them relief from that pain, whether it be physical pain or mental or emotional pain. Strengthen us all, Lord. Show us a glimpse of heaven. And Lord, I ask that you would give us the wisdom to know how to reach out to the people around us and spread the good news of salvation. Give us wisdom, Lord. Put the words on our lips and the prayers in our hearts. And as Jesus taught us to pray, so now we all pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us of our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Now our hymn of commitment is number 529, How Firm a Foundation.
our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ bless each and every one of you. Abide in Christ. Abide in His love. Amen. Amen.